Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, we're going to be looking at performance testing. And before me, I have three lovely IDE cards that we're gonna have a close look at and look at some benchmarks for. However, before we do that, I do wanna look at a couple of other things, including some of the differences and similarities about the cards, as well as how to configure the cards. So let's go ahead and have a look at those two items and then we're going to get right to the benchmarking. Let's get started. Let's have a really close look at the actual cards, shall we? And from there, let's also look at the configuration software that comes with these different cards. First up, we have this very non-distinguished Winbond based card with a model number of MS3807-1. And this is an ISA card, and I think pretty much every clone in the mid-90s had a card just like it. This particular card has a single IDE channel that we can see over here, as well as a floppy channel, a game port, which I don't have a connector for, two serial ports, a parallel port, and that's pretty much it, as generic as they come. Next up, we have this Promise Super IDE card, and you can see that it means all business. There is no serial, parallel, or game to speak of on this card. We do have our single IDE channel, as well as our single floppy channel. And being a caching card, we do have a spot for two 30-pin SIMs, and I currently have two 4-megabyte modules in there. But this card definitely means business, if you look in the center of the card there, you will see an 8186 12 megahertz processor. So, this particular card has more processing power than some computers had at the time. Pretty exciting. Next up, we have this Visa Local Bus card by Bus Logic, model number BT410A. And this particular card is very nicely equipped right now with four. 4 megabyte 30 pin SIMs to give us a caching allowance of 16 megabytes. Much like the Promise Super IDE card, this card is also all business in that it does not have any serial, parallel, or game, but it does have two IDE channels and a floppy channel as well. And much like the other card, this card also has a very powerful processor in that it has a 20 megahertz 286 on the card itself. So this card also more powerful than a lot of computers, definitely more powerful than the PS2 model 30 286 I have in the basement, all on a card. And for the Visa Local Bus card, I'm also very fortunate to have the original box. You can see it here in all of its glory. Pretty nice. We can look at the back here and see all kinds of good information about this card. And it does make the claim that your disk performance will be boosted by 350%. We'll see about that. As for the Winbond 16-bit controller, we can just come into BIOS and do an IDE hard disk auto detection. It will find it. Piece of cake. So in the case of the Promise Super IDE card, if we try to do a hard drive detection, we get absolutely nothing. So what we have to do in this case is actually set the drive by hand and that's what we've done here. To configure this card we can run these SI utilities namely the SI menu which will bring us to a couple of different configuration programs such as SI save which will take the disk cache buffer and flush it as well as SI mode which allows you to enable or disable the cache or return. Also the SI configuration program, which allows you to look at your drive parameters, which you could then copy into your BIOS if you don't know them. And then we have the diagnostic utility as well. And as we can see, everything is a pass. That's good news. So looking at the bus logic Visa Local Bus card, we can actually come into BIOS and do an IDE hard drive auto detection and it will find the hard drive 
no issue there, which is really great. And after BIOS boot, you can see we're taken here, where a cache DRAM countup will occur. It will count all the way up to 16 megabytes. We can also hit the delete key to speed that process up. And we can press F2 or F6 to go into the setup utility. Let's have a look. Here in the setup utility, there's a lot of different options, including the disk parameter setup, where you can go in and you can see that the IDE bus has detected a SanDisk SDCFB512 card, and you can set up your cylinders, heads, and sectors in one of these four drive configuration areas, and then choose what you want your drive C, D, E, or F to correspond to. So in our case, we've set up D0, and we want it to correspond to drive C, but we could just as well choose something else. Coming into the controller option select, you can choose things like your cache size, whether you have more than two drives, whether or not you want to have a primary or secondary registration for the controller, as well as the ROM BIOS address, amongst other settings. The display drive information option will display information about the hard disk itself. And there are also some utilities for mirroring drives, as well as doing image copies and compares. Here's a summary of the different card characteristics, and I have added a row for Atapi support. I did some testing off camera and found that the Winbond card will support my Atapi DVD drive, while the other cards will not. Also, I've added a row to the bottom that indicates the max memory. I believe we've already talked about it, but it's nice to see that as well. Okay, that's enough exploration for now. Let's get to the performance test. So for the test today, we're going to be looking at four different applications or tests. First, we're going to be looking at SpeedSys for MS-DOS. Second, we'll also look at CheckIt for MS-DOS. Third, we're going to have a look at Windows 95 boot times, just to see what that looks like. And finally, fourth, <laughs> we're going to use a program called Disk Speed to have a look at the read and write performance of the disk under Windows 95. We're going to start our testing today with SpeedSys, which is an MS-DOS application. And this is going to be testing the random access time, buffered read speed, linear verified speed, and linear read speed. And you may have noticed that one of the cards seems to be pushing through the test a little bit quicker than the rest. I won't show the whole test here, but I'll at least show a good portion of the first part of the test, and I'll give you the results here at the end. Next up we have Check It, which is testing transfer speed and average track seek time speed. And you can see the results right before your eyes. Next up we're going to do what I call the Windows 95 boot up time test. So once again our three cards, you'll notice the Winbond card made it to the non-graphical portion first, whereas the BusLogic card came in second. However, keep an eye on that BusLogic card you'll notice it makes it to the incorrect display adapter screen because I don't have the display adapter configured right first, followed by the WinBond card, and then finally we can see that the Promise card will be in third place. Next we have this simple disk speed test, which does a read and write test, and you can see the results here. And here is a summary table of metrics for the tests that we conducted. Let's start with the first item in the table, SpeedSys Random Access Time. It's interesting how close the WinBond and BusLogic controllers were to each other, but it's even more interesting how far off the Promise controller was. I would say it's pretty close to what? Twice as slow as the other controllers? A little more? So that's actually very interesting. Next, for the buffered read speed for SpeedSys, you can see just how great that caching Visa Local Bus Controller is, and how big of a difference the cache makes. With a buffered read speed that's five times faster than the Winbond, and we'll kind of discount the promise results for now. Moving on. <laughs> so anyway, next we have the Linear Verify Speed, and this one's a little bit all over the place. Once again, it's pretty impressive how much slower that promise controller was as compared to the others and we can see that the verify speed for the bus logic was pretty impressive. As for linear read speed for SpeedSys, we can see that the WinBond and bus logic were pretty close to each other. 
So once again, I feel like this is a solution that perhaps IDE had worked out by this stage in the game. However, you can see the Promise, which was an earlier controller, definitely is a lot slower for even doing linear reads. Next, we have the Check It metrics, and we can see that the transfer speed probably correlates most closely with the SpeedSys buffered read speed, so nothing too surprising there. Uh, Check It is not a strong benchmark performer test, but it's interesting to run nonetheless. As for the other Check It metric, I did find it interesting, the average track seek times. And once again, that poor Promise Super IDE controller does not do great. But then again, to me, 0.3 milliseconds feels pretty fast no matter how you slice it, so we'll say that's decent. Moving on to the disk speed test, you can see that the bus logic does do better. It's not quite a factor of 1.5 over the wind bond, but it's definitely an improvement, and I'm sure the caching has something to do with that, and we won't even talk about the Promise controller. Moving on to the disk speed read metric, similar to other metrics we saw earlier, we can see that reading is really fast for that bus logic controller. And finally, moving on to that last interesting metric of Windows 95 boot time, I was very impressed by the bus logic 16 second boot time. The wind bond 24 second was also respectable. And the promise super IDE time of 34 seconds was, well, by now I think you get the point. Wow, that was really interesting. I would have not expected that at all. I would not have expected a non-caching generic card to beat the pants off of a caching card. But I think it's worth noting that this card was a higher end card that predated the non-caching card. So there is that, and I'm sure that it gave great performance for its period of time when it was in use and in service. Now that leaves us to look at the claims of this Visa Local Bus card that we saw. And I think it's fair to say that its claim of 350% performance increase holds true. When we were looking at the transfer speed of around 2,000 kilobytes per second versus 8,000, if my math's right, that's 4x. So with this testing complete, I have another idea. So since that Visa Local Bus controller card does support varying amounts of cache, wouldn't it be interesting to see how the card performs if we install less cache or more cache? So let's try an experiment. In addition to the 16 megabytes we've tried, let's try 512 kilobytes, 2.5 megabytes, and 8.5 megabytes, and let's see what sort of results we get. Here once again we have SpeedSys, this time with four different amounts of cache memory for the Visa Local Bus card. And it's interesting how many of the metrics are actually similar to each other. However, we do see some variance in the different metrics for random access time, buffered read speed, linear verify speed and linear read speed. Next up is check it. And you can see in some cases we are actually maxing out performance. And in just a second here, you'll see all results before your very eyes. And finally, here we have a summary table showing the metrics we just looked at. It's very interesting how different levels of cache have an influence on things. I'm really looking at that transfer speed with less cache, but it's really surprising to me as well how the other metrics really tracked against themselves, independent of the memory amount. So the question becomes, how much memory do you really need? So yeah, despite the different types of possibilities for installing memory that there are, I just assume put 16 megabytes on this thing and install it in the machine. Since, well, memory is a little cheaper these days than it was back in the day when these cards were hot. Might as well go for the 16 megabytes. Which leads me to the next question. Which card stays in the 486DX4? Well, it may seem like an obvious choice. We should go with the Visa Local Bus controller card. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Here's the only thing that would keep me from using that card. Often, I boot up this machine to copy a floppy disk or check on something quickly, and the boot up time gets extended greatly by using that caching controller card. It has to do its power on self-test and count up all of its memory. That said, I think that small penalty is worth using that card over a more generic card. So I'm going to declare that card the clear winner today and its reward will be installation in the DX4 100. I hope you enjoyed the video today. 
I certainly enjoyed making it. Uh, this video did take a lot more time than my normal videos do to make, but I think it was really worth it. Uh, I'm sad to say that I probably won't be using this card for any applications. Uh, at the beginning of the video, before I did the tests, I was actually contemplating putting it in my Gateway 486 DX266 in the basement. I think I'm going to hold on that for now. Definitely subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. I've got a lot more content in the pike, lots of content made, and lots of content in the works. So ring that notification bell and you'll receive notification when that content becomes available. If you enjoyed the video, please do give me a thumbs up. If not, you know what to do. Definitely comment below if you have something to say about the video. I love feedback, so definitely give me any feedback you can provide. Uh, one item of feedback I got is there's a little bit of echo, so I'll be looking at maybe setting up a new studio. Uh, as the channel grows, it's probably time to uh, set up a permanent shop somewhere, uh, so more to come on that. Anyway, as always, I've really enjoyed having you along for the ride today, and I can't wait till see you till next time. So that's going to be all for now. Bye.